Okay, all right. Um, so we have discussed all these things, and I think we discussed all these as well. Okay, now. Okay, so let's talk about so the second order effects. We will see it in some other class, and maybe sometime next week. Uh, so let's talk about power dissipation. So what does this power dissipation mean? So when a CMOS circuit is switching, there will be a power that is cutting, you know, consumed. Now that will eventually, you know, drain your battery or, you know, consume uh, electrical units. Okay. So uh, now there are two things. Okay. One is basically a static power, static power, and then you will have uh, the second one is dynamic power. So what is the meaning of static power? Say, for example, a simple question. Let me put, put this here, right? Like, see, you are actually, you know, everyone is having a TV at home now. So when you turn off your TV with remote, okay, so will there be any power consumption or there will, you know, will there, you know, so what, what will happen? So you have just turned off your TV with only remote, not the main switch. Okay, so will there be any power consumption or there won't be any power consumption? Uh, internally, at sleep state, it will consume some minimal amount of power for certain circuitry. What is that called? So why there is a, how do you say that minimal power consumption? How do you say that there is a minimal power consumption? Like what it is going to be? Anyone else who wants to add here anything? So the answer is yes, there will be a power consumption. Okay. Otherwise, the answer would be no when you feel that okay, there are no power consumption. A simple question, right? Like, like, see, I understand that you know you may not know everything, but when given an opportunity or when, when, when you have been asked a question, start answering. Okay, fine. All right. Okay. So static power, which means when the device, you know, whether it is operating or not operating, okay, there will be a still power consumption. It's mainly basically we say, we say when the device is in off state okay there will be a power consumption that is something mainly we call it as a static power consumption okay now under that when you say static power these are all the different uh, components you can say they are all put together we call it as a kind of leakage power okay really called leakage power Okay. And now what is this meaning of this leakage power? It's like kind of, you know, let's try to understand. See, there is a subthreshold leakage. So what is this meaning? What is this meaning? What is the meaning of subthreshold leakage? So if you look at the slide here so this is basically a cutoff or you know you say the transistor is said to be in off condition okay so the transistor is said to be in off condition okay now but ideally your i you know we say your drain current is zero that is the formula that we have right but what will happen is there will be a leakage okay there will be a start static or so you know subthreshold conduction okay now that will actually you know uh, 
con- you know a contribute to your static power so whether say on a, you know bigger chips or you know when the chip is powered with the live supply voltages no you will not realize but when you have a chip which are powered by batteries for example your mobile or tab or your laptops all these are operated by battery voltage or battery supply so your leakage power is supposed to be kind of you know optimized so the static power meaning here is basically sub threshold conduction when the device is in off state there would be a power consumption okay you know there will be charges that would get you know leaked or probably you know traveling so that is basically that is due to sub threshold conduction okay sub threshold conduction that is something that we call it like kind of sub threshold leakage and then now coming to this reverse bias diode leakage so what is the meaning of reverse bias diode leakage so if you look at your transistor structure assuming say this is p substrate okay p substrate now say this is going to be n say this is going to be n now easily you can see here there is a diode formation okay that is a p and then n right now there would be a reverse bias diode leakage okay so there would be a reverse bias diode leakage okay and then so these two are the major components behind here or you know contributing to your leakage but these are all something it is kind of you know very small in you know number or you know percentage but these two are the main things that you should actually always remember so sub threshold leakage or uh, due to sub threshold conduction and then you have got a uh, reverse bias diode leakage uh, due to the structure of your uh, mos okay so any question here on static power hi yes, sir yeah hi here the in static uh, which leakage that comes under that we can say it as input leakage for some cases we can measure a input leakage for testing and all we don't have anything specifically called input leakage output leakage and all it is just leakage due to the device structure or the nature of the device so when you say sub threshold conduction right so is it due to input or due to output i i, I cannot classify because when the device is in off condition so obviously your input is going to be say zero or kind of you know if it is p mos sorry if it is n mos and it is going to be one if it is a p mos so how do you say that you know input leakage i i i cannot uh, say that okay okay sir okay yeah no. sir can we make the design without uh, leakages absolutely no you cannot see if there is a transistor there will be a leakage so it's just that you have to minimize your leakage you cannot go ahead and make it zero absolutely is, not it is not possible if there is a device in your chip it will have a leakage only thing what you can do is you can actually try to minimize that leakage okay all right now say that is you know static power and when the device is in off state okay now assuming the device is basically switching okay now there are two things so dynamic power okay simple right like you have everyone have got smartphones now assume you are actually playing a game in your phone or say you are using your phone for some high end uh, you know activity okay now so what will happen to your power what will happen to your power okay, so please. assume you are playing a game now what will happen to your battery 
battery drain as soon as possible. It consumes more power. Okay, so it's basically your battery gets drained faster than a regular activity, correct? When it comes to your, you know, say you are playing high-end games. Now, why is that? Now, why is that actually happening? Because of high performance activity, the switching activity becomes more in the CMOS. It consumes high power. Okay, all right. Now, if you guys look at a simple thing. Okay, now, as we discussed, there would be something called load cap. Okay. So this load cap is basically your, uh, you know, the next stage, uh, say for example, assume you have got a, say, inverter. Now this inverter is driving, say, four fan outs. Okay. Now the CL, that load cap is going to be, you know, we call it always, say, C pin plus C net. Okay. That is C pin plus C net. What does this meaning is your pin capacitance of this four fan outs. Okay. Pin capacitance of those four fan outs. Okay. Plus there is a net that would get routed later part. Right. So now that is nothing but your C net. Okay. Now there is a cap out. You know, it's called load cap that we, we cannot avoid again. So you remember this, your parasitics again. Parasitic, say you have a resistance and capacitance. Now, so if I have to depict this with the parasitics, okay, you know how it is going to be is, so it is going to be say something like this. Okay, so here again, you cannot avoid this completely. You have to live with this. Well, the only thing what you can do is you can actually minimize it. Okay. You can actually minimize it, but you cannot get rid of this. So now when you say transistor is PMOS is on, See, when you give zero, that is on and they say this is off. Okay. Now, what will happen is the charge starts transferring and then this load cap gets charged. Okay. It is basically charging. Okay. And then now assume there is a next stage. Okay. So, the input is one. Then this becomes off. Okay. And then your NMOS is on. Now what will happen is you will have the load cap get discharged. So that means what it is basically when there is a switching, okay, the power that gets consumed, it's basically called switching power. Now the switching power is due to charging and discharging of load cap okay that's a basic thing so that is actually switching power so any question here So it is uh, just like just like as a switch, yes sir. 
uh what do you mean by it is like a switch yeah transistor is basically a switch you know when you give yeah. the input at the gate it operates as a switch right that function is going on here no the switching power is basically when there is a charge you know the load cap gets charged that time there is a power consumption now that come that is called as a switching power and also then there is a discharge right. in case if it is a n mos is on so that is also we call it like kind of you know again switching power now one thing that you guys have to understand here is your formula is basically p switching okay is basically alpha c v squared f so it purely depends on your switching activity okay switching activity that is a main factor okay now the c is nothing but your load cap whatever the load cap that we were talking here no that is a load cap and then your voltage twice the it's it's basically double the impact okay and then your frequency okay so now this is why we call this as a kind of you know the switching power basically depends on your alpha I means it's basically switching activity which is basically alpha and c is going to be your cap and then v squared and then f this is how the switching power is calculated okay and then the next thing is your uh, you know short circuit power what is this meaning of short circuit power say for example now you have a signal that is going from 0 to 1 okay now during this state what actually happens so p mos is on because it is zero and the n mos is going to be off okay now here in what will happen so p mos is going to be off okay and your n mos is going to be on okay now what will happen during this time what will happen during this time the transistors would be in a transient state that means what during this state Tra transistor is will, will charge so in this your state p mos would be going from on to off state okay and then n mos is going from off to on state now what does this meaning is both the transistors are not exactly in a kind of you know settled manner they are kind of transitioning one state to another state now that means there is some portion or some fraction of time where you will have your you know the direct path okay you will have the direct path okay now that particular thing is called So now, if you look at here, this particular thing. There is a slightly you know, direct, you know, for some time there is a direct path. Now that is actually called short circuit, short, short, short circuit path. Short circuit. Okay. Now the power, whatever that is consumed during this particular time, it is basically we call it as a short circuit power. okay now so we were just talking about p switching here okay now what is this meaning of p short circuit so what would be the uh, you know formula so there is a short circuit current okay so there is a short circuit current now that is going to be isc that is a short circuit current into your vdd okay because that is your vdd supply right 
Now that is something that we call it as a kind of you know short circuit power. Okay. Now putting all the things together. Now what would be the dynamic current? I mean a dynamic power uh, formula or say the equation. P dynamic is equal to P switching plus P short circuit. P short. P short. Okay. Now. P switching is going to be alpha C V square. Okay. Now whereas P short circuit is basically your short circuit current into voltage. Okay. Now how do you optimize your switching power? Or say how do you optimize your dynamic power? What are the things that you can look at? What are the things that you can actually look at? We can configure capacitor, VDD and FC according to equation. So now try to understand this basic formulas of this both the powers and you know whole power part right now I want you to go and check how do you optimize your power? So you can actually explore low power methodologies. Okay, so you can actually explore basics of low power methodologies. Now let's say if I want to reduce your leakage. So what are the options that we can use? Figure it out. Okay, now I want to reduce my switching act, I mean basically uh, dynamic power. dynamic power okay now what methods you will try to use say for example don't tell me that you will reduce the c or you will reduce the frequency and all frequency we normally don't prefer reducing frequency for saving your power okay so now see you can also say that you know i would actually go and reduce the supply voltage okay now what value so how do you do that so let's say you are working in 7 nanometer okay your typical voltage is say all the way from 0.65 volt to approximately 0.96 volt okay that is a range now you can pick whatever the things that you want in this range okay now what would be the voltage that you can actually choose okay and do you have a library models for it so there are a lot of things so Try to go and try to explore um, what are the different ways that you can actually optimize your static power okay and then optimize your dynamic power okay okay uh, so that's all on the power side uh, any questions Okay. Okay. So let's talk about the inverter. Okay. Now, so did we talk about something on the strong zero and weak zero and all? I guess yes. Did we talk about strong zero, weak zero and all? I gave it as a homework if I'm not wrong. Yeah, yes sir. By the way, why nobody is actually sharing the assignments? Okay, anyway, so the group is getting created. So whoever has kind of, you know, uh, I'm, I'm supposed to add you guys to the group. So you will see that in this week. Okay. Okay, all right. Uh, so before we go there, so did we talk about something called a post transistor logic? 
past ancestor and then transmission gates okay let me walk you guys through this no no sir okay okay so let me give you a simple problem now say this is going to be a source gate and then train what would be the output v out what would be the output okay so let me give you some five go ahead. it's greater, greater than threshold voltage and it can, oh, can you hear me? I can hear you. According to your uh, drawings, 5 volt and minus 5 volt is uh, 0 and it's greater than threshold voltage and the uh, output will be 5. Okay. Are you sure of it? 1, yeah. What about others? Maybe I mixed, mixed, I can mix about uh, according to VT voltage zero and input is I'm not five. saying VT voltage, I'm it's actually great, great, VT, so VGS assuming, is greater than assuming VTH point, VT is point seven volt. Out. Assuming VT is 0.7 volt. Assuming Four VT is 0.7 zero. Uh, VT is 0 0.7, uh, according to this, VG, VGS is 0, uh, and the, the out will be 0, because it will be uh, less than threshold voltage. Out, output, I, uh, I think V out is 0, according to this. Okay. Because v, VGS is 0, L less than with threshold voltage. Uh, okay, but... Anyone else want to add anything here? Yeah, actually, the formula is uh, VDD minus the threshold voltage, then 5 minus 0 0.7, 4.3 is the output voltage. Okay, so the formula for this is this is being N mass. The formula for that is basically VDD minus VT. Okay, so it is going to be kind of 5 minus 0 0.7 which is going to be 4.3 volt okay now so let me just give you a simple oh, okay i got it I, okay. okay so what would be a v out here So this is case one and then case two. Two point nine. This is case two. Okay, now, okay, so there is an answer 2.9 volt. Any other answer? 2.9 volt. Okay, 2.9.
Okay, so let's go and try to solve this. Say here it is going to be 4.3 and here it is going to be 3.6 and this is going to be 2.9 volt because you just apply this formula where this is going to be your source okay and this is going to be a drain and then gate gate and this becomes source and then this becomes drain and this becomes source and this becomes gate and then this is basically drain okay now eventually this transistor's vdd is 4.3 volt and this transistor vdd is 3.6 volt so eventually you know when you apply this formula it is going to be kind of you know getting you know 0.7 is getting reduced at each stage okay so 2.9 is the supply you know the v out okay now what about this one Second is the same, 2.9. Okay. Would anyone else have any other answer? I'm also getting the same thing when you said 2.9. Okay. Okay, can you know, what about others? There are more than ten people, but why only two people are talking? Okay, now say what it is going to be here, VDD minus VT, what would be the value, 4.3 and what would be the value here, VDD minus VT, what is your VDD, same 5 volt, remember your source is always connected to 5 volt, okay, only your drain is, you know, your gate is being driven by some something else, okay, now it is going to be again 4.3 volt and here also it is going to be 4.3 volt isn't it try figuring it out Guys, is it clear or it is like kind of you are kind of confused? Clear. Others? See, these are all the kind of yes, questions sir. that you would actually get it in written tests. Okay. Okay, now 
having said that right now what is our digital world means okay we prefer the signals to be either at logic 0 or at logic 1 so that means it is 0 volt or it is supposed to be VDD okay now okay now if if you plot this values right what would be the curve can you guys tell me what is your output voltage assuming VDD is 5 volt now what would be this is it possible to go beyond 4.3 Now, if you look at this particular thing, digital world, we either operate as I said, 0 or 1. Okay, now we don't operate it in between. We don't like to be, you know, we don't like to op you know, operate uh, between 0 and 1. Now, having said this, there is a concept called strong 0 or strong 1 and then weak 0 or weak 1. Now what is this meaning? So assuming this 4.3 right, is it a strong one or weak one? So there is no doubt that you know it is a 1 or 0, it is 1 for sure but just that whether you have got a strong one or weak one. Okay, now if you see this, right? Hey guys, can you hear me? I got dropped for a minute, I guess. Am I audible? Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay. I'm now audible. Okay. Yes. I'm just sharing the screen. Give me a minute.
Okay. So we were talking about strong zero, week zero and strong one, week one. Now in this case, so we were sure, you know, we are sure that 4.3 is a, basically a one. Okay, logic one. But the question here is, is it a strong one or weak one? Is it strong one or weak one? What is your supply voltage levels? It's weak one. It's reduced. Yeah. So since it is not equivalent to the VDD value, so you know what? As I said, we would prefer strong zero and strong one okay now in this case since this is n mos so n mos which is getting used right if you try to make circuits using n mos alone you will have weak weak one okay so now what does this meaning is your n mos okay will give always weak one and what about zero it would give always strong zero okay and now what about your pmos strong one and weak strong zero. one and weak zero now this is the main reason why we say or why we keep pmos in the top and nmos in the bottom okay so if you look at your basic inverter Okay, we always draw it like this, right? So PMOS at the top. So this is your PMOS that is at the top. It's basically pull up network. And then NMOS at the bottom that is basically pull down network. Okay. So the reason why we have this is PMOS always supports strong one. And your NMOS, you know, contributes strong zero or produces strong zero. That is the main reason why we keep PMOS in the top and then NMOS at the bottom. Now, what is the circuit? It's basically an inverter. Now, a simple question is, what will happen if you interchange these two? What will happen if you interchange these two? It produces weak signal buffer. Okay. So it produces a weak signal and it operates as a buffer. So can we go ahead and use this buffer in design? I believe it's not preferable. Okay, what about others? The device will not turn on. Basically, this will be source will be higher voltage, and the, the device will not turn on for both in motion to motion. The VDS will not turn on. So you will not have any device operating on it. So if you change the potential of the PMOS and NMOS. Okay. See the way I would look at is yes, you say when you say buffer, what is that meaning? 
when you say a buffer what is that meaning so it's basically two inverter okay connected one after other or one inverter driving another inverter now this is what we call it like kind of buffer correct now this is our actual inverter now what about this guy if you interchange this fmos and nmos it becomes a smaller buffer where in this buffer you know in this buffer you have got a four transistor okay and whereas in this buffer you have got only two transistor okay let's say you are working in a area critical design okay so which buffer you will try to use second one two stand two transistor okay how oh, how oh, sir we are saying second one introduces weak signal how oh, we use this that buffer which buffer you use the two transistors okay but it isn't it producing a weak signal so a buffer with the true transistors that means the nmos at the top and pmos at the bottom okay now even if the chip is so you know whatever it is area critical i'll go back and tell them that this this chip cannot be designed or you know we cannot implement this particular thing in this area but i will never use this kind of circuit in my design which produces the weak signal okay yeah yeah so even if it is area critical or whatever the case is i don't prefer this particular thing i prefer this one only okay No, that is not buffer also. That is just a signal which draws out and draws in. So that is not basically a two transistor device. Is not at all a buffer also. No, the function is that as is a buffer. No, just a function is as a buffer only, right? Function is as buffer. If you just see in terms of voltage values, so the values are nowhere like related. So it's all just a, something you'll be getting as an output. But if if you just consider body terminal connection also, right? Then body effect everything will come into play. So basically, you can't use that type of. So you are connecting no, NMOS no, no, to VDD. No, 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 no. Let's let's make it simple. Let's not complicate it. These are all certain yeah, interview correct. questions. Okay. Now okay. you will have to answer it in a short where he can say that you know, if 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 I have been asked this question, you know what I would say is, see the true transistor buffer. i just draw the circuit with n mos is at the top and n p mos at the bottom and say that this produces a weak signal and now what about this four buff, four transistor buffer i would actually say that you know do the area is high but it produces a strong signal buffer but it's basically acts as a strong signal buffer so i would always choose this over this okay even if it is area critical or whatever it is it's at the end of the day you want the chip to work okay not like okay you just want to design it with a given area but what if your chip is not working after manufacturing so it is everything is kind of a mist correct okay uh, so that is on the pos transistors and then strong zeros and strong ones weak zero and weak ones <coughs> okay now what is this transmission gate what is this transmission gate so transmission gate is basically it contains both nmos and pmos see ye and this is going to be say a bar now say this is going to be input and this is going to be your output now when the a is 1 okay what what will happen and what happens to the circuit see this is what side
so this is n mos and this is p mos both are just connected each other so it's like kind of this say like this simple okay now in case of zero what will happen if a is zero what happens p mos turns on and in fact so the charging output. happens when it a is zero <clears throat> okay the charging happens through p mos okay depends on whatever the thing is assuming if it is a logic one okay so the charging is taken care by the p mos and if it is one okay charging through p mos okay and when it one what happens the charging through n mos okay now ideally speaking it still gets you strong zero and strong one but what is the drawback here what is the drawback it didn't have any price marking so the main drawback here is if there is any noise at the input okay if there is any noise at the input the output does not suppress it it's basically the transistors will amplify it and then give it as a bigger thing so the noise margin or you know noise levels in this scenario is very less that is why we try to avoid transmission gate in our cell designs or any of that but there are some places we still use it but we will actually know how to manage it okay so now the assignment for you is i want you to go and draw look at the design i'm mean, basically the schematic schematic for dff d flip flop okay and then you will understand it okay so these two are important things that you might come across in interviews okay so then the next family is something that we call it as a cmos okay okay before i go there cmos so any questions on fast transistors and then transmission gates and now you no told that hello sir i can hear yeah uh, just now you mentioned that tf of schematic it didn't get that we want to see with respect to transmission gate or is schema no normally if you go and look at your book that whatever that i have prescribed or say you know i suggested cmos vlsi design by westy and harris westy and harris okay now yeah okay. you will see the dff uh, d flip flop schematic over there okay ah uh, yes sir the next logic that i wanted to cover is cmos okay now this is the place where we have pmos at the top it's basically what is the meaning of cmos it's a complementary complement metal metal oxides yeah so it's basically cmos complementary mos what that means both pmos and nmos 
they <coughs> only one would be you know on at any at, at any point of time the other one would be off so it's kind of complementing each other okay and we know why we keep pmos at the top and why we keep nmos at the bottom okay now let's try to understand what is this inverter so this is an inverter this inverter and now this this basically we call it as a kind of you know symbol or say gate okay and this is something that we call it as a schematic this we call it as a schematic now what is this meaning is it's basically you have got a pmos and then you have got nmos and they are kind of connected so both the inputs of the pmos and nmos are shorted and then connected to your input and then your outputs are you know basically your output z is connected to the drain of both of this okay now you guys have to understand one thing is that so when any you know any point of time you try to draw the schematic try to do this gate gate now this is going to be source this is going to be source and this is going to be drain and this is going to be drain okay gate source drain okay now remember So PMOS source is almost all the time connected to VDD unless otherwise there is a sharing okay VDD and you know so the two transistors coming in series and things like that uh, NMOS is similar thing it would be almost connected to ground okay that's a basic thing okay you should remember now with this you would be able to draw any kind of circuits okay now this part is basically we call it as a schematic okay okay now this particular thing that we call it as a layout which we will see it little later in the next class or next to next class in detail how do we draw the layout and everything okay now uh, so when a is zero pmos is on your Z is charged up to VDD, which is basically logic one. Okay, and when A is one, your PMOS is off and NMOS is one. Okay, and your dis Z is completely discharged up to VSS, and your logic is zero. Okay. Now that is how say someone asks you to explain CMOS inverter I mean, uh, operation. This is how you should be explaining. Okay. Now moving on to the next one. Now this is NAND gate, okay. Now can someone explain how this NAND is kind of getting, you know, or how NAND is operating? Assuming say it is truth table, right? Say 00, 0, 1, 1, 0 and 1, 1. Now what happened to your PMOS A, PMOS B? NMOS A and NMOS B okay so in this case it is going to be say say this is A B now when it is 0 0 both are on so both, both the PMOS, PMOS and NMOS are on. 
this two are off and your z is going to be 1 okay or this basically out okay now in this case what will happen your p a p mos is going to be on this is going to be off and then this okay now this is going to be a which is on and this is going to be off now what off. is the path for charging no, no, sorry sorry so na for n mos will be on for uh, one lakh not for zero right ah oh, sorry my bad my bad my bad yeah zero is on no, for n mos and one is on yeah i got it. yeah this is off then and this there is a charging path there is a charging path because your pmos a is on okay so you have got a path so that means it is again one okay what about this one so it is going to be off this is on. going to be on and this is going to be on and this on. is going to be off so there is a path again this but there is no discharging path okay because not see the discharging happens only when both of them are kind of off I mean, on the both nmos are on so in this case it is going to be off both pmos are off and then both nmos are on now this is going to be say zero now so this is how you should actually analyze uh, any given circuit okay Is it clear? So I normally follow this method so that like I can make sure that you know I'm I'm not making any mistakes. And NOR gate. Can you guys give it a try? Zero zero is only on and then others are off. Zero zero is one, and then the other start is zero. So the truth table, you look at zero 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 one one zero one one. So now in this case, only in case of zero zero, it is charging. Okay, that means it is going to be one. The all the other cases, it is going to be zero. That is a here. nor gate operates okay any question here can i ask a question go ahead in non gate and nor gate when you are connecting with series and par parallel with complementary uh, when when we are connecting pmos is pa parallel and most is serial yeah okay see the the way we are connecting is like kind of you know the nmos are in parallel where your pmos in series Okay. So basically, NOR is opposite of OR gate. So OR is the only one will work. Right? So this is the opposite of that. Yeah. Okay. That is the reason you are seeing it. So keep the version of whatever OR gate is. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Now, I think I might have given this as an assignment. So NAND gate is bigger in terms of area or AND gate is bigger in terms of area. Which one is bigger area? Which one has a bigger area? Which one has bigger area? And yet. Okay, is that one or two? One. 
which is having a bigger area and gate or nand gate nand one one okay so the voting first takes one voting and what about next what about others one sir two two okay can you answer your uh, thing in the chat box you guys can you guys are keep changing it so i want answer in the chat box yeah kalimuthu you have raised hand what is it Okay, one. I think so. Just um, do one. Second. Okay. Like. Okay, one. Okay. Oh, uh, I see many people are answering one. Oh, uh, so all of you are supposed to write an assignment or say imposition five times. okay now the cell which is going to be bigger area or the cell which is going to have a bigger area is and gate okay don't be under impression that you know your nand is so in your textbook we always read and gate first and then you add inverter and it becomes nand gate okay but in case of cmos logic by default with the four transistors you are able to get nand logic now you to get inverter you need to uh, sorry to get and gate you need to add one more inverter okay so it is going to be kind of and which is basically six transistors okay so this is the punishment for you guys uh, because i have kept the circuit in front and i was just trying to see if you guys are able to answer okay all right uh, so that's all for the day i would like to stop it here so you guys try to go over all this and next week uh, i will update you guys uh, what would be the status of the class because i may take off